वेलकम टू द कंसेप्ट ऑफ कंट्रोल चार्ट कंसेप्ट बिफोर बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द कंसेप्ट ऑफ कंट्रोल चार्ट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड वन सिंगल थिंग वाई कंट्रोल चार्ट वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड अर्लियर कंट्रोल चार्ट वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड टू फॉर्म अ पर्टिक्युलर सोल्यूशन टू अ टर्म कॉल्ड स्टैटिस्टिकल और इज अ पार्ट ऑफ सोल्यूशन टू द प्रोसेस कंट्रोल प्रोसेस कंट्रोल मीन्स even if an organization is getting good result with a certain kind of process associated with it it can get better and while talking about betterment we have to compare the previous kind of datas that we are getting with the process and the newer kind of datas that we are wanting to get now this expectation level with the current one if we are comparing it we can definitely better the kind of control on that process by implementing this particular concept of control chart this is control chart is a basic tool uh, used for uh, should i say uh, displaying uh, the inspection results of a sample of a particular product uh it can it can show you it can it can show you students the derived statisticals limit uh, which helps to discriminate uh, between a random variability and an assignable variability every every single control chart is consisting of three lines a central line an upper control limit and a lower control limit any kind of uh, control charts can be generally divided into two types one is called control charts by variables one another one are control charts by attributes control charts by variables can be treated as x bar r chart and the attributes charts are known as the p chart c chart and np chart if we talk about initially the first chart called the x bar chart x chart or the x bar chart is basically the average chart that we generally talk about average chart generally talks about or measures the central tendency of any process the range chart or r chart talks about the spread of that process or measures the spread of the process these two chart x chart and r chart are used together and commonly known as x bar r chart as i was talking about the p chart p chart is generally known as the fraction defective chart which records the proportion of defective items in a sample np chart is also called the number defective chart which records the number of defective items in a sample the defects chart or the c chart records the number of defects in a component or a particular product these are the different kind of control charts that any organization generally use while talking about control charts as we were talking about x bar r chart is a pair of chart consisting of an average chart which is called the x bar chart and a range chart called a r chart the basic theory uh, behind this x bar r chart are based on the concept that the average of a sample of several items tend to cancel out the normal process variability and the undesirable changes due to assignable causes uh, therefore thereafter uh, which becomes very visible uh, most importantly uh, we can we can definitely say that the upper and lower control Uh, statistical limits are worked out and inserted into this particular chart as we were talking about the uh, should i say the upper control limit and the lower control limit in this particular chart in this particular chart the central line is given as the x double bar is the x double bar or the mean of the mean that is what we mean by it and most importantly the upper control limit is given as x double bar plus a to r bar again r bar is the mean of the total range and a to 
is a particular uh, should i say constant which will be given and not and uh, is not within our limit to calculate that particular thing and lower control limit of x x bar chart is x double bar minus a2 r bar and most importantly for r bar for r bar the central line is r bar and most importantly the upper control limit for r chart is d3 into r bar and lower control sorry i'm really sorry d4 into r bar is the upper control limit of r chart and lower control limit of the r chart is d3 into r bar for your uh, should i say uh, betterment i have listed down i have listed down all the formulas and you can find it out in the last slide of this particular ppt or this particular video you'll find out all the formulas have been jotted down in a particular page so that you can be benefiting uh, from that one so moving on as we were talking about uh, X, xr chart let's talk about an example of xr chart as you can see it is a very detailed one uh, how do we understand this particular example that one single sample has five different results so sample one two sample 10 each has five different results attached to it like for sample one i'm just mentioning here uh, sample one 25 is the first result 25.01 is the second result again 25 is the third result 25.03 is the fourth result and the fifth result is again 25.01 so similarly it continues from 2 to 10 so what we need to do we need to plot the x bar and the r chart and find out uh, which of the given observations are out of control as i was uh, telling to you guys that a2 d3 and d4 are all constants and will be given to us so you can see here the a value of a2 has been given at point 0.5768 d3 has been calculated at 0 and d4 is 2.114 to move on with the calculation we first need to find out the x bar chart while talking about x bar chart for sample number one if we take the mean of x to be x bar one so now as i said each sample has five different results so the first sample is having the result of 25 25.01 25 25.03 and 25.01 so how to find out the mean for sample number one we will add up all the sample value that has been given to us for sample one divided by the number of repetitions here the number of repetition is five so adding up all the values we are getting 125.05 and dividing it with the number of repetition we are getting the mean of sample one at 25.01 if this is the mean that we are getting for sample number one simultaneously now students you have to just find out the arithmetic mean for all the samples from 2 to 10 and you can see here i have found out all the uh, arithmetic mean of the samples and just cross check the values whether it is matching with me or not coming back to find out how to find out the range for one sample i'm just showing you for one and then you can do it uh, on your own just find out but just see here that the maximum data available for sample number one is at the fourth repetition which is 25.03 and the minimum data available for us is at uh, repetition number one and repetition number three which is at 25 so highest minus lowest the high again i am repeating the highest minus lowest of any sample that should be highest minus lowest should be the range for each sample so for sample one the highest minus lowest is giving me the value of 0 0.03 simultaneously if we can calculate it back to uh, sample 10 we are getting the values according which i have shown it in the uh, slide itself so these are the values so now we are clear how to understand the arithmetic mean of each sample and how to find out the range of each sample 
moving on uh, with the solution here now we need to find out the grand average what is the grand average the mean of all the means as i was saying the formula for x double bar is the arithmetic mean of all the samples divided by the sample number now so as we have found out in the previous in the previous slide we have found out the arithmetic mean of all the samples so simultaneously i'll just put up all the values here and add it back and then i'll divide that particular value of 250.10 by this number of samples that we are having here that is 10 so the grand average or x double bar is coming at 25.01 whereas the mean range or the r bar is somewhere coming at all the uh, ranges that we have find, found out in the previous slide uh, that is uh, by calculating the highest minus lowest range uh, the subtotal is somewhere coming at 0 0.40 divided by the sample number we are finding out the uh, range or the r bar to be 0 0.04 now moving on to the calculation part here as i was saying we have three kind of lines here central line the upper control limit and the lower control limit so the central line here we are talking about the x double bar x double bar is actually calculated already calculated at uh, 25.01 the upper control limit is calculated at x double bar plus a2 r bar which we can uh, the value of a2 has already been given to us at 0.5768 you can find it out in the sum itself and multiplying it with the r bar we are getting the value at 25.03 and the lower control limit we are finding out uh, uh, to be at x double bar minus a2 r bar and if we can calculate the value back we are finding out it at 24.99 now coming back to the most important part of any control chart sum we have to show it graphically what we are trying to mean if we are seeing now in this particular graph i have taken the sample of 10 which has already been given to us and I have plotted the mean value of each sample in this particular graph taking the upper control limit to be 25.03 uh, the central line to be 25.01 and the lower control level value to be at 24.99 so now if we find out we find out that if we plot all the values we find out that the 10th sample which is having the value of 24.98 that particular value is not coming under the control is not coming within the prescribed control lines here so that particular sample is out of control if remember this class even if one single sample is out of control it makes the entire process out of control here As we have found out that continuing with the sum that we have found out that 10th sample was out of control here now when we talk about how to rectify that so now what we do we leave out that particular sample once we leave out that particular sample the sample number moves back to 9 when we move back to the sample number 9 now and calculate the rest of the x double bar and r bar we find out that x double bar is somewhere coming at 25.01 and the r bar is coming at somewhere uh, 0 0.039 the process is absolutely same like the previous one just here the sample number has changed from 10 to 9 moving on with the calculation of central line lower control limit and upper control limit we can easily find out that the central line is coming somewhere at 25.01 the upper control level is coming at 25.04 and the lower control limit is coming at 24.99 so when these three lines has been obtained by us now if we put back the same kind of values with the upper control level lower control level and the central line now we can plot and see that each single line each single point i'm rather sorry each single point is coming within that prescribed guideline within that prescribed line of the upper control limit and the lower control limit so now we can definitely say yes this x bar chart is within control 
so this is how we uh, draw the x bar chart and not only x bar chart remember class we have to draw each and every single chart that we are calculating moving on to the r chart calculation the central line for r chart is given at r bar which we have already calculated new at 0 0.039 or we can transfer the value at 0 0.04 the lower control level as we have said it to be d3 into r bar as d3 has been given at 0 the entire value moves back to 0 and the upper control limit has moved back uh, or is can be calculated at d4 into r bar where d4 is a constant as I have previously mentioned d4 has the value of 2.115 where the r bar value has already been calculated at uh, 0 0.39 0 0.039 rather so the value generally transfer back into 0 0.08 now I have not shown it here this is your responsibility how to draw an r chart here you have the central line you have calculated the lower control limit you have control you have calculated the upper control limit just draw the line with nine different results and those nine results which you will be putting in the r r r chart will be the range that you have found out previously in the for the each sample that's what you will be putting in the r chart graph kindly do it and check whether the process is under control or not but until that particular part has been completed the sum is not completed let me remind you once again let's move back uh, to the concept of fraction defective chart or the p chart the control chart for fraction defective is uh, used where the products manufactured in the organization are inspected or and can be classified either accepted or rejected uh, this this uh, particular part can be furthermore this rejected pr particular part can be furthermore divided into spoilage or a certain kind of rework so if we talk about uh, what do we mean by uh, fraction defective chart uh, this is a certain kind of uh, thing which records the number of items rejected to the number of pieces inspected calling it thus the name here is come here it comes the fraction defective so this is how we generally find out the fraction defective chart uh, let's let's go into uh, the furthermore example of uh, fraction defective i'll not i'll not uh, elaborate on the theory how the uh, standard deviation uh, is is found out or or something of that sort we will we'll just go back before before going into the example just i'll remind you of the formulas that are associated with uh, should i say the fraction defective chart is that the central line is generally the p bar central line is generally the p bar i'll come back how to how to calculate it the upper control upper control limit is is the formula is practically uh, p bar plus 3 into uh, root over p bar into 1 minus p bar divided by n and the lower control level is p bar minus 3 into root over p bar into 1 minus p bar divided by n as i have previously mentioned also for your uh, betterment i have just recorded down all the formulas and put it into the last slide of this particular video so kindly go back and check out what are the formulas that we have been talking about so taking an example now of the fraction defective chart here 10 samples of each size 50 has been inspected by an organization the results of the inspection are generally given below so we can find out the sample number that are there 1 to 10 and the number of defects that are there uh, we need to draw a p chart and we have to state our conclusion coming back to the solution of uh, p chart here uh, as we were talking about we have the sample numbers which have been given and the number of defectives uh, 
we have been we have been talking about the number of defects that are there in each sample uh, we can find out that and add back the total number of defects to 20 now coming back to why this particular method is talked about as fraction defective in the sum itself uh, we have seen that each sample has a sample size of 50 so one sample is equals to 50 units now how to find out the fraction defective the defect that are there in one sample divided by the number or the size of that sample. So I am giving you one example. Suppose if I talk about sample number one. So sample number one or here it, here is it, it is constant. So sample number one to sample number 10. Each sample number will have the same kind of size that is of 50. So now if we talk about the number of defects here, sample number 1 will have the fraction defect of 2 by 50. Very similarly, the sample number 2 will have the defect of 3 by 50 and continuously it will go on. So 2 by 50 or 3 by 50 should give you the fraction defective value which we are getting it at 0 0.04 or 0 0.06. Now if we add back all the fraction defects here we get the total uh, fraction defective to be at 0 0.40 now if we talk about the average fraction defective that is p bar here we generally do what the total fraction defective divided by the sample number which is at 10 which gives me the p bar value at 0 0.04 if you do not like to solve the particular uh, p bar this way the alternative method is that the total number of uh, item that we are inspecting is sample number of 10 and each has a sample size of 50 so the total number of items that i am inspecting is 500 the total number of defects that are there which we have already uh, counted at 20 so the average fraction defect should be the total number of defect divided by the total number of items inspected so that is also <coughs> 20 by 50 which is again giving me the same kind of result at 0 0.04 you guys are uh, free enough to uh, go with any kind of method any of the two methods that you are wishing to Now, the central line as we talked about for P chart was P bar which is already calculated at 0 0.04. The upper control limit and the lower control limit formula that I was literally telling you just the previous slide. Uh, we can see here the upper control limit formula is P bar plus 3 root over uh, P bar into 1 minus P bar divided by N. Now, here comes one, one more thing here that this particular small n this particular small n is the sample size that we are considering we are not considering the total number of items that has been inspected that is the sample size here and not total number of items please be clear with it if we are clear with it the upper control limit for uh, the upper control limit should be calculated at point one two three one more important term here here you can see the to lower control limit has been calculated to negative 0.43 here or 0 .4, 0 0.043 here. Class, just remember one thing or students just remember one thing that no limit is there beyond 0. You cannot draw, draw a graph or any error cannot be calculated or cannot be shown in a graphical method at negative and since any error or any tangible error cannot be beyond zero so whatever for any kind of this is not only for p chart this is applicable for all the charts here if any upper control lower control value comes beyond zero if it is coming at negative, we will transfer that value back to zero itself. Again, I am repeating here because this is one of the most important part that if any upper control level value or the lower control level value goes back and comes at negative, since no error or any tangible error cannot be calculated beyond zero, cannot be calculated at negative, so simultaneously that value we will be transferring back at zero so here 
you have the upper control limit and the lower control limit very similarly this is again your homework or you you might uh, do it on your own draw a certain graph and show whether the values are under control or not then only the sum should be completed generally if you want the answer here yes according to my calculation the p chart is generally coming under control now check the check the uh, sum here whether you guys can do it or not moving on uh, from the p chart to the concept of np chart uh, there is a uh, bit of difference between the p chart and the np chart as uh, p chart unlike uh, is or, or np chart unlike p chart records the number of defects instead of the fraction or the proportion of defect so here the total number the total number of defect might be calculated in this particular np chart uh, you can you can easily say uh, that np chart in np chart the p bar is very similar or is very similar to the uh, calculation of the uh, p bar chart right so if we go now with an example if we take the same example than that than that that of uh, should i say uh, the p chart here we can see uh, the second part or of the calculation of p chart what which i have shown in the formula in the previous sum here the sum of defective samples divided by the total number of pieces inspected if we go back now we can easily find out that to be 20 by 500 you can go back to the previous slide and check it that is coming at 0 0.04 now the central line of the np chart is calculated at n into p bar so again as we have said and I have explained it in the previous slide itself that n is 50 here and not 500. So 50 into 0 0.04 should give you the value of 2 and upper control limit and the lower control limit formulas are uh, subsequently n into p bar plus 3 root over n into p bar into <coughs> 1 minus p bar and just for lower control limit that will be negative just that just that uh, so calculating the upper control level and the lower control level we are finding out the upper control level value at 6.17 and the lower control level value we are finding at negative which we are transferring back into zero again we have the central line we have the upper control limit and we have the lower control limit so you can again draw the graph and for your hint that the points that are there are absolutely within this particular limit just go on and check it whether you are getting it or not moving on to the concept of control charts last variant that is the defects chart or the c chart we call it uh, this is a particular chart where we measure the number of defects in a particular product as we have uh, talked about uh, in the earlier thing a control chart with ex which exhibits the counted data on the number of defects is practically called a c chart as we have talked about the quality characteristics in this chart therefore is the number of defects per unit per unit so this is a whole number of defect which we are calculating a product may have more than one defect but all defects are not of equal importance while calculating the c chart so if we now go back the central line formula for c chart is c bar the upper control limit formula for the c chart is c bar plus 3 into root over c bar and the lower control limit formula is c bar minus 3 root over c bar moving on with the sum here as we have done for most of the control charts what has been given a certain number of uh, defects has been found out in the sample number from 1 to 10 so we need to construct the control chart uh, for the total number of defects here so moving on with the calculation as i have just said the central line calculation for c chart is the c bar 
which is the total number of defects divided by the total number of samples now if we if we uh, put on uh, should i say the value here if we if we add back the uh, should i say the number of defects value we will definitely find it at 30 and the sample number is given uh, at 10 so definitely 30 by 10 should be 3 here and the upper control limit value if you put on all the values here we can get it uh, up to 8.2 and the lower control level uh, formula uh, as we have talked about c bar minus 3 into root over c bar we are getting the <coughs> value at negative negative 2.2 and we can transfer it back to 0 now if we plot back uh, using the control uh, chart here if we if we plot back you can see here i have plotted it back and all the values are within control so if all the values are in control we can definitely say that this particular process is definitely under control.